So I recently came across this project by Tom McCartan named Sex in Space, and I think this project is a great example of how you can use textures to spice up your animations and really dig deep into that collage style of animation. So in today's video, I wanna show you how you can use textures in a little bit of a cooler way than just using them as overlay textures. Now this video is sponsored by Motion Array, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But for now, let's go into the first step of the process. Like any good TV chef, I've cheated a little bit and prepared some scenes in advance. You can get these as well as the After Effects project for this and other tutorials I've made on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash mypal. In total, we have three scenes. We have the first scene, which is a car driving through this mountain range. Then we have a scene with a planet. And last but not least, we have the title scene. So kind of imagining this as like an opener to a video. Planning these scenes in advance will make your life a lot easier because you can source all the assets and materials you need before you even get into After Effects. Forwards thinking, backwards planning. Now with that out the way, we can hop straight into After Effects where I have a 1920 by 1080 composition set up, 24 frames per second, the usual, nothing special there. All I've done is add a solid, which will serve as our background layer. Now from here, uh, Photoshop makes it super easy. You can just drag in the PSDs into After Effects and get access to all the layers. So that is the first step. So I'm gonna take my artboard here, which is the first one, and I'm just gonna drag it into my composition and I'll get this little pop-up window here and I'll just hit okay. And just like that, it imports it as a pre-comp that we can then work with later on. To make it a little bit easier on ourselves, I'm gonna drag in all three of them. You do have to drag them in one by one for this to actually work. So that's just what we're gonna do. A good tip is to stay organized. So once you've dragged all of this in, you can drag them into the respective folders up here in our project window. So the artboards forum, I'll just drag into the pre comps folder and the rest of the little folders, I'll just drag into assets since it just contains the individual layers of all of the pre comps I'm gonna hide the two scenes that we don't need yet. I just wanna start by working a little bit on each one individually and then in the end, we can work on piecing them together. This is just my preferred way of working since I just feel like it makes it a little bit easier for me to focus and actually hone in on the animations for each one. As you can tell, I already have some assets in my scene, like this grass or even the car and the mountains that I actually trace from an asset as well. And you might be thinking to yourself, where do I get a hold of such sexy assets? And well, that's where today's video sponsor, Motion Array, comes into play. I think that most of you know that Motion Array has a bunch of fantastic animation presets, whether you work in Premiere Pro, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, or even After Effects. But they don't only have animation presets. They also have great assets like the photos that we're gonna be using today, or even the textures that we'll be using, which are all super high quality. Not only that, but they also have stock footage, music, sound effects, and even plugins as well for your editing programs. The variety of high quality assets and materials that Motion Array offers makes it a no brainer, especially considering that the subscription includes everything. And when I say everything, I truly mean everything. You pay for the subscription and you get it all. So if you are interested in upping up your game and getting access to all these sexy flexi presets, stock footage, all that good stuff, then head to the link in the description where you can get $50 off when you sign up for the annual subscription. It's truly a no brainer. But with that being said, we can hop back into After Effects and start working on our first scene. I'm gonna double click here and go into my composition where we can get access to all the layers just to make it a little bit easier for us to work with. The thing to keep in mind is we want to do this as a collage style animation. So we're gonna be adding a little bit of sauce to it in terms of the stylization, and we're gonna be keeping the animations pretty simple. We also wanna keep in mind that our focus for today is using textures as design elements. First thing I'm gonna do is just make the car super easily. I'm just gonna make it black and white. I'm just gonna do that by adding a lumetri color to it and then decreasing the saturation. This allows us for a little bit more control as if you were just doing uh, HSLs or whatever. So we can actually go in and play with the contrast highlights and all that stuff. So it just, it just sets me up for success later down the line if I need it. And I can copy this and paste it onto the rest of the car just to make sure it's all black and white. And I'm gonna do that for the grass in front as well. And for the grass, it looks just a little bit too faded. So that's why I would wanna go into the basic corrections and just play with the contrast and make sure that we actually get something that pops on the screen maybe increase the exposure a little bit and increase the highlights and decrease the shadows a little bit. Next is adding our textures. I've already created a folder here with all my assets that I'll be needing. Again, you can get this on Motion Array, make sure to head to the link in the description. And I've just categorized this into what scene they belong to. So I have road texture here and for the asphalt here, I just wanna use this rough asphalt texture. Just, it makes sense, it fits, it looks super cool. And I'm just gonna drag this down below to actually be where our road is. And we can see, I haven't named them too well, but they are here, so we can just name this road. And then if I show this again, and I'm gonna use that as a track mat. So, boom, just like that, we can scale this down a little bit because we don't need it to be 
super, super crazy looking and move this down and then add a Lumetri color to this as well. And we're just gonna take a little bit of that saturation out. So it's a little bit blue and I just wanna remove that just a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, desaturated, I guess. So maybe like a 30 for the saturation. And the cool thing about this is you can even scale it down even more. Right now we have it at 14%. You can scale it down 10 just to get the texture exactly what you want. And then if you wanna expand it, we're just gonna add a Repetiles effect. Boom, and then we can just expand it to the right and expand it to the left as well. You can see a little bit of that line where it expands. And one trick I like to do is instead of having it a repeat, I like to do unfold because then it's kind of more of, it's a bit more of a seamless transition between the spots. And this will work super, super well. And just like that, we have a road, but there's still a little bit missing. See, I like having those yellow lines just for a pop of color. And they're actually gonna be super, super simple to make. So I'm just gonna start by creating a little square here and we can make this yellow just so we actually know what it looks like. So boom. And then I'm just gonna drag out a little square here and I don't want it to be a very thick rectangle because with it being a little bit skinnier, we'll get a little bit more of that perspective. So it looks more like what it should look like if you're looking at it from the side. We'll, we can always play around with this as well. And we can just name this road line. And then I wanna take in the second texture that I have, which is just this kind of stone texture. It's kind of hard to describe, but I really like the texture in it. And I figured it would work well for kind of like what we're using it for. And I'm just gonna place it over this and then use that as a track mat here. And maybe even scale it down just a little bit and move it around. So I might even wanna thicken this up just a little bit, just to get a little bit more of that texture in there. Maybe something like that would work pretty well. And let's just move this up a little bit and we'll place it behind the car so that we actually drive over it like such. And just play around with this until you get a look that you think works pretty well. Maybe even extend it a little bit, or shorten it. Really up to you what you wanna do. And I'm just gonna add an HSL slider to this. Boy. Hue saturation, boom. And then we can just click the colorize and increase the saturation to 100. And we can just play around with this until we get that nice yellow orangish color and then play around with it a little bit from there. Maybe desaturate it just a little bit and decrease the lightness. And just like that, we essentially have our little yellow lines on the road and go down into the shape and then go into add. And then we're just gonna add a repeater. And this is gonna be a little bit more efficient. And then we are gonna play with the transform effect to extend it out. And all we wanna keep in mind here is we wanna add a repeater to the texture as well, or a repertoire, sorry, uh, just to make sure that we can actually see our sides. So we'll just increase that and boom, then we can play around here again so we can actually see what we're doing here in terms of spreading them out evenly, maybe something like that. And you can play around with the amount of copies, just increase that a little bit and move the offset a little bit so we have some starting in the back as well. Boom. I might even take the grass and just add a drop shadow to this. And that's just to create just a little bit of depth between the road and the grass. And let's just increase the distance, move it up that way and soften it a good bit. And maybe decrease it just a little bit, just ever so slightly, have a little bit less distance there. Just a tiny bit of separation can make the world of a difference. And uh, before we head onto the mountains and adding texture to them, I'm just gonna add a little bit of animation to our wheels. Now, I've already cut them out so they are nice and, you know, it's just a wheel, each one. And I'm just gonna move the anchor point of this to be in the center of the wheel. Let's just move that in there, boom. And then we're gonna do the same for the front wheel. Move that to be right in the middle of that pretty well. And then we can just select both of them, hit R for the rotation. And you can add a time expression or you can keyframe them manually if you wanna change the pacing throughout. So really depends on what you want. For our sake, I think we can just go with a simple expression. And uh, I'm just gonna alt click the rotation down here. And then I'm gonna type in time times, let's do 10 and see what the pace of that looks like. That's a little bit too slow. Let's try 100 and we can work from there. I think 100 is perfectly fine. We don't need to be driving too fast. And I'm just gonna right click, copy expression and paste it onto the other one. That's it, now we have driving wheels. From there, we can take all our car details and uh, or every single part of the car and we can just create a null and link them to that null. I'm just gonna use void because it's a lot faster, but 
a null is the same thing. So I'm just gonna hit null and it'll link it all. So now if we animate the position of this, we can have a car that's driving, which is super neat, super easy to do so. Just before we get to the mounts, it's just create a little bit of shine on the car. And that's actually a super cool way you can do this. And it does require that you have cut out the car body itself like I have here. So I have only the body because I knew I wanted to do this. Again, that's what I was talking about in terms of thinking forwards and planning backwards. I knew I was gonna do this. So I set myself up for success that way. But I'm just gonna click and drag and kind of make like a little bit of a swoopy, swoopy shape here. And we can change the color of this to be a white color. And I'm just gonna move this down to the car body below the details. And then I'm gonna use the car body as a track mat. And I'm even gonna link that to the void as well, just so if we move the car, it's it's all kind of there. I'm gonna reshow the car body. And we can just animate the position of this. So I'll move forward, let's say right about here, keyframe the position, and then move forward a little bit. And then I'm just gonna drag this back so it swoops across the car. And then we can select the keyframes and add some sexy speed to it, which we can get on Patreon as well. So you just make your life easier using flow in that. And just like that, we have a nice little swooping animation. You can slow it down, you speed it up, but we don't want it to be too slow. We just want a nice swooping animation. Maybe even move this out just a little bit more. Boom. And you can add some texture to this as well, but I actually really like the look of it just being a solid color. I feel like it really adds to that color style. Next, we should play with the mountains a little bit because they are gonna be a real treat. So I'm just gonna solo all of them and then we can start playing around with them in terms of laying them out the way we sort of want them to. And then we can hard reshow everything else. And I just wanna make sure that all of these look pretty good and they're all like, the base is covered by the ground itself. And we can take these and again, I'm just gonna use a null so that we can control them moving across. Uh, so I can drag it out to the left, sorta, of, right here. Maybe move this red one up a little bit and over a little bit more and keyframe that and then go all the way to the end and just move that out the way a little bit. Purple one, move it a little bit and the blue one, a little bit there. So now essentially what we're getting is a nice little animation where the mountains in the back move. If you wanted to take it to the next level, you can add a little bit of parallax so the ones in the back move slower than the ones closer to because that's technically how it would work in real life. But we're not too worried about actual physics in this instance. And from here, I wanna start adding some textures. So back into my little folder where I have everything we need and mountain textures. I'm just gonna start dragging in and just placing these kind of roughly across the mountains that I want them to be on. So maybe this black rock, we'll take that and we'll add it to one of these Let's just do one by one, I'll link it to that one. The texture doesn't move with it, so we wanna make sure that we link the texture to the void as well, just to make sure that we actually get some of that movement with it. We can scale this down a good bit and put that one right there. Now, the only thing here now is that they all kind of look similar in their tones, but that is super easy to work with. Essentially, what we wanna do is keep the ones that are closer to us a little bit darker and the ones further behind a little bit lighter just to simulate kind of the you, you're kind of losing them in the distance. And again, you can use something like Limit Your Color to make that super easy on you. And we're just gonna move from one to the other. So this first one I think is pretty good, it's pretty dark. And we're just gonna move back to this one. And uh, let's just add a Limit Your Color to this and go into the basic correction and we can decrease the exposure just a little bit of it. Maybe increase the contrast a little bit so we don't lose too much of it. Increase the highlights a little bit and then take down the shadows a little bit. This one, which is the one we have over here. And for this one, I might even decrease the saturation a little bit just because I don't want it to be too colorful there. And maybe decrease the exposure a little bit more here like that and increase the contrast. For the other ones, we'll just paste that on there and then just reset it. And we can just increase the exposure a little bit and decrease the contrast. So kind of opposite of what we're doing. So now we get a little bit of depth in there, which just looks super, super nice. And the last thing there is to really do with this is animate the car, which we have the void for. So I'm just gonna hit P. I'm gonna start out to the left. Let's move forward. Gonna have it move up the road a little bit, move forward. Move back the road a little bit and up and out. Then we can select this. We can add some easy, some easing to this and play around with this a little bit to get the exact look that we want. So maybe start out a little bit fast. Boom, have that come in sort of like that. Move this up a little bit, move this up too. And lifting them off the ground is just gonna make it so that the animation doesn't come to a complete stop. It just kind of slows down a good bit and moves around. Do a full speed out at the end. So it really takes up a lot of momentum as it exits 
this, the scene. And then we need to animate the lines as well, which we'll kind of just do with the row too. And what we're gonna do here for the road, we can add a motion tiles, which is just gonna let us move the ground without actually moving the position. So we can just keyframe the tile center and then move forward. And we're just gonna move that to the left. Maybe do like minus a thousand. We might wanna move that up a good bit more because that is pretty, pretty slow. So I'm just gonna hit you on these keyframes and let's just do a lot more just to give it a little bit more motion. And let's just solo that up and let's just turn on the background here so we can see what we're doing. And uh, we're just gonna take the position of this and we can start by moving it as much as we can right there, keyframe the position, go forward towards the end and just move this as much as we can with as many copies as we have. We can always create more copies, so it's not really the end of the world, but we just want some pretty good motion here. And you can see that works pretty well. And I think actually I wanna remove the grass. I'm just not feeling it in the final piece. And that just means we just gotta change the road a little bit. So on our road here, it's just a moss. So I'm just hit M and do an add. And then we can take these bottom two and just move them up a little bit like that. And let's take this mountain here and just move it up as well. And I think that looks pretty good outside of the contrast of this with the mountain. So I might just increase the exposure of this row just a little bit, just to get just that bit more separation there, which is really gonna help in selling the look. From it, we can go back into our main composition here and we can start working on the second scene. And then once we have the second scene in place, we can work on the transition between the first and the second and then so forth. So I'm gonna show the second one and I'm just gonna go into this. This is a scene inspired by the Tom McCartan project. Just thought it was super cool and it uses some super cool techniques. And I think it's a great example of how you can use textures to really add a lot of layers. We're gonna start with the first one, which is gonna be pretty simple. Again, back to my planet textures. So for the outer one, I just have one texture here that we are gonna be using. And I'm just gonna drag that right above and then scale this down a good bit. I really love this texture. This texture has so much character to it. It's beautiful. We're just gonna add a Lumetri color and play around with the lighting of it a little bit because it's a bit underexposed and not very bright and vibrant, which I want it to be. Increase the contrast as well. And let's maybe increase the saturation just a little bit with the vibrance. Something like that I think will work pretty well. Just, such a beautiful texture with all this. I don't even know what this is supposed to be, but it looks fantastic. For the second planet, which I'm just gonna show here, I wanna create almost like an earth looking type of thing. So I have a few different textures here that we are gonna be layering. I'm gonna start with this blue, which is gonna be our water. Just fantastic that it happens to be blue. And I'm just gonna scale that down, boom, and just get a nice, I mean, look at that, it's beautiful. The next thing we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna create a few different shapes that are gonna be kind of like earth looking things. So I'm just gonna draw out a little bit here and you can make it smooth, you can make it jagged. Really just depends up to you. I'm just gonna create some blobs here that hopefully will work pretty well. And then we can add our texture to all of these. I'm just gonna drag in the other three textures and take that one to that, that to that, and that to that. And then we're just gonna track mat all of these. Boom, and we can scale them down a lot. And then we can take these little planets and let's just pre-comp those, name it uh, country one, country two, country three. And we can take these layers and just pre or use the small planet as a track map for that. From there, I actually wanna go in and just add a little bit of movement to the texture as well, which will just give it a little bit more spice. And it's super easy to do. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. For this, I just want it to be very subtle. So I'm just gonna hit P to open the position or click the position. I'm gonna add a posterized time and I'm just gonna set that to something like six and then I'm gonna add a wiggle and let's set that to something like two, 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 comma two. So it'll just give it a little bit of movement where it just moves around ever so slightly. And you can right click copy expression only and then hit R and then you can paste that onto the rotation as well. So it'll move the position, but also the rotation. So just a little all around wiggle, which will just give it a little bit more movement, fit that uh, style and we can hit P and shift R and paste the expression onto that as well. And we'll just do that for all the textures for this planet stuff, just to really sell that nice style. Just add a little bit of more movement to it. You can see then the next thing I wanna do is work on the transition between the two. So right now, I actually want this to be below our outer planet, so it'll be like a shell. The way I'm gonna recreate it is use the pen tool, and I'm just gonna click and drag and kinda of make some blobby fingers, almost, just like that, and move that over there, boom. So now we get this 
very blobby shape. It's hard to even describe what it actually is, but we're gonna use this as our little transition piece. And we're just gonna take this and maybe even extend this. So I'm just gonna highlight this and search for path. Boom. And I'm just gonna take these markers and just drag them to cover the whole thing. And then if I animate the position of this, we'll keyframe that, go forward. Let's do 20 frames. And then I'm just gonna move the position of this to uncover this whole thing like that. I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna name this planet one. And then I'm just gonna use that as a track mat here. So we get this nice big shape. And as it comes across, we get this nice blobby look. So we can add a turbulent displace to this. And we'll set the first one to 30 and the second one to two, which is just a slight hand-drawn look almost. And in the evolution options, I'm gonna alt click the random seed. And then down here, I'm just gonna do a posterized time. Let's do six and a time times, well actually let's do a random instead. So I'm gonna do a random and then I'm just gonna type in a thousand or even more 10,000, 100,000, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna duplicate this and just say, set that to 10 by 10. Just gonna give us a little bit more variance and then you can play with the amount and the size for the second one. But you wanna get something that looks pretty blobby and you can even go as far as add a rough and edges look to it as well. We'll just give it a little bit more of that vibe but we can hide that again so this looks pretty good i think we can slow this down just a little bit more and maybe even add something like a wave warp just to add a little bit more motion to it so i'm just gonna increase the width a whole bunch and it'll just give it a little bit more movement here which is just help spice it up just a little bit but i think that looks pretty good that should be it for our plants which means we can now go back and let's work on piecing these together so that they become one scene. Now we have our first scene here, which is our car, which is driving through. And I'm just gonna drag this up maybe a little bit so we don't have something that's super long, but drag this up so we have it where it ends. And I'm actually thinking to use that momentum to go into the planet. We have the car speeding up here and let's see, right about halfway when he's out the scene here. So right here maybe we can end that. So I'm just gonna cut the clip and then I'm gonna show my second clip here which is our planet that starts and we have the transition that switches planets right here. So we want just a little bit before it. So maybe just trim that up a little bit. And now what I wanna do is create a little bit of a shape that'll then carry on into this. So maybe what we'll do is create a little blob, which I'm just gonna use a rounded rectangle for this like that and change the fill to a black for now. And I just wanna increase the roundness of this a good bit. So it's kind of like a full pill shape and we can play around with this just a little bit in terms of the look of it. I'm gonna take this and right here, let's go back here, just line that up with this, let's say. Keyframe the position here, go forward. We want it to end, let's say, right about here. And then we can go back into this and maybe just drag it all the way out in here, boom and add just a little bit of a curve to this so it kind of comes in and hits it. So we get that animation, boom. And then we just want to right click on this and then we want to go into transform and auto orient and then go into orient along path. And that'll just mean that it kind of rotates with it. So we get kind of like that, boom. And then we can take the second layer here, keyframe that, and let's just move this over a little bit. So move that up this way, boom, and we want to kind of take this and add some super sexy out boom so that it exits with a lot of pace and maybe move this over just a couple more frames because ideally we want to see it as soon as our clip ends to get that match cut feel of it and then as soon as that hits let's move this up just a little bit more boom into that and we can drag that below her and then we can take this and let's just add a little bit of a like a bounce to it so let's keyframe the position. Boom, move that forward a little bit and just move that up. And let's move these keyframes up a little bit and move that back here so it kind of goes boom, boom, kind of bounces back, kind of like an impact hit. And we can add inertial bounce to this to help sell it a little bit more. So alt click the position, paste the inertial bounce expression, which will just give us, if I solo this, just give it a little bit of a bounce, which is kind of cartoony, but kind of works as well. And then we can just trim this layer so we don't see it again. And then all I want to do from here is just move this down so that it comes back into maybe the middle of the screen. Make sure that is centered. Maybe make it a little bit snappier. Maybe we don't even need to have it that far up. We can just kind of come and 
Give me just a little bit of an angle here. Boom. I think that looks pretty solid. Now, I do want to add just a little bit of character to this blob here, so it's just not a plain black pill. Let's add some wave warp to this, and we'll just increase the, or decrease the wave height just a little bit, and then increase the width, just to make it look a little bit more, I don't know, like it has some character. Let's add one of the textures that we have in here. Now, all of them are all right here, which I'm just gonna drag into the textures folder. But let's take the black rock texture, and just drag it over there, and use that as a track mat. And I'm just gonna decrease the scale of this a whole bunch. Boom, and then I'm just gonna parent that to the shape itself. So now we just get a nice looking little blob head that just kind of goes into that. And you can change the color of it too if you want it to be a certain color. But I think that looks pretty cool. Just nice little goofy using a lot of textures here to create a pretty interesting scene. We get a nice planet reveal. And the last scene is just our title opener scene type thing which I'm gonna move over to about right here. Okay, so what can we do from here? I think we can use this planet if we take the scale and shift P and then make a little scale it down and then shoot it up so it shoots up into the eye or even falls down and then gives it just a little bit of a bounce. So like it's pretty simple animation, but keyframe the position and the scale and the scale is the first thing I wanna play with. I'm just gonna decrease the size of that good bit like that and move that just back a little bit and then the position I'm gonna move here and I think down is a good bet. So I'm just gonna move that down like such. I'm just gonna select all these keyframes. I'm just gonna add some nice easing to it. So for the scale, I actually just wanna do maybe like a sexy speed, but then for the out animation where it goes down, I wanna add the super sexy out so it carries over a lot of pace going down. So we get a nice little scale down and down. And I just wanna end it, boom. So we don't get that bounce up but we get a nice little whoom whoom, and I think that looks pretty, pretty smooth. Might even move this up just a little bit and tighten that up just a little bit as well. And then we can go into our text layer here. All I wanna do is let's mask out my text. I just want this eye by itself like that and duplicate this and just remove the mask from this just so we have the eye itself and let's keyframe the position here. So let's say at 12 frames, we have it exactly where we want. And we'll go back a little bit and just move that down. And then we need it to start up a little bit higher like that. And we probably should have kept the mask here um, so we can mask that out. So just hit M and do subtract just so we don't have a duplicate of the eye. Then we can add some easing to this. I'm just gonna hit F9 to add some custom easing. So select this and let's go into our easing. We want it to come in with a good bit of pace, land with a good bit of pace, I should say, as it's continuing that fall and then bounce straight back up. Something like that looks pretty good. Maybe not as aggressive at the end, maybe. And maybe just move this up just a little bit. And I think that looks pretty sweet. So we get a nice big impact on that. Uh, let's go back into our main comp and just see what we're working with here. So we have that come down and then up. And then as soon as that impact kind of comes in, let's have the rest of the text move down just a little bit or like a slight bounce to it. So let's keyframe that, go forward to the impact, a couple frames off the one or two, move that down and then have it come back up into its natural position. Move this over just a little bit, just so the timing looks pretty good. That looks pretty sweet. And it's just gonna help sell that impact just a little bit more. And again, what we can do is just add a little bit of texture to this as well. And this completely depends on what kind of character you want to give it. But I think maybe having the eye set be a little bit separate than the rest would look pretty good. And I think the blue texture background will actually work really well for this. So I'm just gonna track map that and I'm gonna parent it to the eye as well. And I'm just gonna scale it down to fit our little eye here. And I'm just gonna change the color of it by adding a hue and saturation slider here. Boom, and let's just change it to maybe a nice yellowish color here. Maybe increase the lightness just a little bit and the saturation to really get it to pop. It's just gonna give us just a little bit of differentiation in there, which I think looks super cool. Now that's pretty much the basics of the scene and just using textures in a few different ways. We can go in and add just a little bit of sauce. We can add the regular posterized time, the good old, you know, we all, we all know it, set that to like 12 or something like that. 
And then one thing that is gonna work really well is adding a solid and changing that to 80, 80, 80 for the color, add a nice green to it. We're gonna add, add green, then change it to final output and set the textures and like one of the Kodak presets, change the application to film. And then just, I like setting the size up to like 1.3 and the same with the softness and then adding a tint to it as well. And then we can pre-comp it, just name this green pre. And we wanna make sure that all attributes are in the new composition and then set the blending mode to something like overlay, which will just give us a little bit of that texture. You can also change it to linear light, which will give you a lot more. And then you can just dial it back on the uh, opacity itself. So set that to something like 40, just depends on how crazy you really want to go with this. You can also use some overlay textures like particle textures, for example, you can add those in. These will also be available on my Patreon, uh, just from some textures I've scanned myself and then I've just animated them and just exported them because it's a lot easier to work with that way. And I've even added the little uh, parentheses with what blending mode works best for each one of them. So it's super easy to work with. You just change them and then just like that, you have some nice particle textures in there. I like putting them below the adjustment layer with the post-rest time, then add another one and add a transform effect. Just set the scale to something like 101 or 102 so you don't get spilt on the edges. And then you can keyframe the position or alt click and then add a wiggle expression. We'll just do a, let's say a 15 comma three for this one just a little bit different than what we have on the textures themselves for some nice difference. I'm just gonna move that below all the textures just to give it a little bit of that wiggle that you typically associate with this style. Just very simple, very rough in some instances, uh, just to really hammer in on the look of a collage style animation. But that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Just a fun little exercise in using textures in a few different ways that we don't normally use them in, which is always a great way to change up what you're doing and get inspiration in new ways and learning new techniques. Again, if you are interested, the project file for this and the other tutorials are available on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash my Paul. If you're looking for some motion array assets like all the assets we use today, you can find that in the link down below where you get $50 off when you sign up for the annual subscription. Outside of that, I mean, I just hope you enjoyed watching this. Link to the original project where I got the inspiration from this in the description as well. Super great, I highly recommend watching it. And uh, outside of that, just feel free to comment, like, subscribe, I suppose. And uh, I'll see you again in the next tutorial. Peace out.